be reading today, so I'm going to introduce myself first. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that I'm so glad that you're all here, and I hope everything worked out smoothly this morning. You all look very happy and kind of tired, but me too. Um, <laughs> so, my name is Ona Schaefer. I'm a second year oceanography student here at Cal Maritime. Um, my hometown is um, Gonda Beach, and um, here on campus, I am a ACMA um, student senator, so I'm student senator for the underclassmen, which is all of your kids basically, depending on their major. I'm for GSMA and oceanography, and I'm also a peer equity leader at the Inclusion Center by the PIAC. And I'm one more thing, but I can't remember right now. <laughs>
and flew nearly 5,000 hours in 43 different aircrafts while logging over 1,200 carrier arrested landings. His career took him to Somalia, Bosnia, Iraq, Afghanistan, and other hotspots around the globe while leading combat air units. President Crapper graduated with distinction from the U.S. Naval War College, earning a master's degree in Naval National Security and Strategic Studies, and holds additional degrees from the University of Tennessee and the Catholic University of America. He also served as a federal executive fellow at the Brookings Institute as a military assistant in the office of the Secretary of Defense. In his current role, he has served in multiple nonprofit organizations, including the San Francisco Maritime Exchange, Leadership Vallejo, Vallejo Education and Business Alliance, the International Association of Maritime Universities, and the U.S. Navy League. Here at Cal Maritime, he works closely with campus leaders, faculty, staff, and student leaders to rebuild and reinvent the Academy of the 21st Century. Please welcome our university president, Admiral Thomas Cropper. Well, good afternoon. Are there any proud parents or grandparents in the room? <laughs> Uh, that your family has someone here at this academy. It's a really special place. Uh, we'll just put the next slide here. One of the things that I, I want to start off with is history starts now. That might be a little bit odd, but somebody's history is starting today, and who is that? That's your son or daughter. Not my history. Is their history. It'll be part of their history, but they are embarking on creating themselves as adults. So you've done a lot of work to get them there, and we're going to take it the rest of the way. Okay? And that is that is what I want you to hear from me today: is what we're doing, not in in the classroom, but getting them ready for a very very special career. Some folks come to the school for a job and find out they're in a profession. Some come for a profession and find they're in a calling. I want your student to consider this as a calling. If her the call of the sea, a calling. It may not be at sea, but it's a calling to lead. It's a very, very, very dynamic environment we're in. So much change and so much disruption in so many places in our society and technology, and we need really strong leaders. And so that will be a very important part of the development, the deliberate development of your child. The backdrop is the sea. Some of you have been on the sea, so you may have spent quite a bit of time on the sea. The one thing about the environment is it's very unforgiving. Sometimes there aren't second chances, and things need to be right the first time. And so we're going to help them to understand the obligation you have as a leader when you're working in these kind of uh, high-stress, high-tempo, and dangerous environments, when you're working around other people who are counting on you to do the right thing when they're not looking, that, that this is the backdrop. This is the environment where they will either be or the people they're supporting will be. Okay, there's three verbs up here in the first sentence. I guess that's really one sentence, isn't it, without a period. Train, educate, develop. So I've talked about development. We're gonna really work on developing, but we're also working on training after education. So we'll educate in the classroom, and then we're gonna have a chance to train. And again, we're trying to get you to leadership positions and step into your first role, very comfortable, leading a team of people, because that is the expectation of the employer. We spent a lot of time working with a lot of people to, to create, to tailor, to improve the programming here. 
Um, how, how many of you are on the campus for the first time today? Okay. How many of you made the trip from down here up to Upper Res? Okay. Now you know why. <laughs> we don't chase the rankings, and I want, to, I want to be really clear about that. We don't chase the rankings, but when someone says something good about us, we'll acknowledge it. Okay, but we're going to use what they tell us, and we're going to just try to be better and better and better. Get up today, and how am I going to be better at the end of the day? And I want your student to experience that through seeing what we do, how we behave. I want them to learn that watching us, that we try to be better every day. There's four points on our compass ropes. The first is intellectual learning. I mentioned education. So you're going to get classroom work and learn to think like a professional. You're going into a profession. We're going to have you learn and think. This is not just repeating back. This is learning, assimilating that, and, and being able to discuss it and to ultimately to teach others. Right? To teach others. Okay. This is one of the cool parts of the school. Hands-on. Right? Apply technology. Simulation. Internships. Co-ops. Uh, Hands-on all kinds of opportunities in every major to get out and get your hands dirty in the work that you're going to do as one of these professionals. It's really awesome. So this is really at the forefront of a lot of what we do is make sure that you're learning by doing. The third piece is global awareness. Uh, some folks have never been out of California. We had a student who'd never been out of LA. The world's bigger than LA. And we're going to show you that world. <clears throat> Can anybody tell me where this person is from? Yeah, it's called MacArthur's Universal Corrective Map of the World. And MacArthur's from Australia. Yeah. <laughs> Which is at the top here. <clears throat> Our grads are going to go interact with 160 different nations. They're going to have, be, have to be culturally competent and interact in different cultures and step in and step out and move on to another country. So that's what comprises this big globe. 70% of the, of the globe is covered in blue, is that water? 80% of the seafood that we eat in California is imported. 90% of the uh, World's trade is moving across the water. So anybody here use internet at all? Anybody use Wi-Fi? <laughs> Does anybody ever, ever correspond on, on, on email with someone overseas? Do you know how it gets there? 90% of the traffic is undersea cables, not satellites. So this, this big globe, there's a lot of maritime in it. It's not just shipping. There's a lot to it. And we're going to teach them about that too. And then developing leaders in student government, in athletics, as residence hall officers, as core officers, as club presidents. There's so many opportunities for your student to get involved. And I hope that they will take that on. I hope you'll encourage them to take that on. Okay, but what we're really going to teach are values. We're going to teach values. We're going to reinforce values. The first values we're going to teach are teamwork and trust and reliability. Let me give you a couple of examples. I was talking to a friend of mine uh, from one of my squadron, my squadron days, who was a NASA astronaut, did three shuttle missions and a space station. I said, well, what's different between the shuttle and the space station? Because, well, you know, shuttle missions about 12, 14 days, um, space station six months. I said, is that the only difference? He said, no. I said, what's the difference? He goes, well, when you go out on a space station, it's like going on a family vacation in Winnebago, except you can't get out. <laughs> so that's when teamwork starts to matter. That's when teamwork really starts to matter. And trust starts to matter. And reliability, that I know that you're going to do what you say you're going to do, when you say you're going to do it, and you're going to do it the right way. 
And that's part of what we're going to be teaching. I just want to talk about this one thing here. This is Teddy Roosevelt. Self-discipline. Who is the agent? Parents? Who is the agent of self-discipline? Not me. And not you. So who's the agent of self-discipline? We're going to teach the agents of self-discipline to get and improve their self-discipline. Now, I want to share with you, and I'm talking to some of the parents back there. There's, there's room up here if you want to come on out. But, uh, and over there, because I want you to hear me, but has anybody heard of a helicopter parent? <laughs> I know nobody in here is a uh, parentis helicopterist, but <laughs> anybody know these things called helicopter parents? Have you heard of them? Yeah. Did you know about the new one that's come out in the last decade? It's called a snowplow parent. Have you heard of them? Oh, well, the snowplow parent pushes all the barriers out of the way for their children so they have no barriers to contend with and they can be very successful. Okay? And I know nobody in here is a snowplow parent. And I know I wasn't even. Self-discipline is going to be, the, the agent of that self-discipline is going to be your son or daughter. We're going to help them to get self-discipline. But I'm going to talk to them tomorrow, and I'm going to tell them there's one question we're going to have at the end of your first year. Who's in charge of you? And if I'm in charge of you, at the end of your freshman year, guess what? You're going to have a heck of a struggle. I want you, I'm going to help you to learn how to be in charge of you. So you know to be on time, and you know where to go, and you show up to class. We're not going to come up and get you out of bed. This is the real world. This is the real, real world. Okay. So when I'm talking about this thing called grit, it's stamina, grit. It's likely that perhaps your child has not had to face a challenge, or maybe had someone snow plowing for them. But they're going to face the real world here, and we're going to help them. We're not going to make it hard, we're not going to yell at them. We're going to guide them and develop them. They're going to meet the real world where disappointment is part of it. Failure is a part of it. It's called life. So disappointment is acceptable. Failure is acceptable. Pain is acceptable. What's not acceptable? Quitting because of those things. Because they're not going to go away when you leave. Your parents and your grandparents and your siblings and your families deal with it all the time. This is real life. So I'm gonna ask your help parents that when we, we, talk, we go through problems and there will be problems. It's not the fact that there's a problem, it's how we're gonna solve the problem. Okay, let us work with the agent of self-discipline. Let us work with your agent, your family member, here at the campus, let us work on their self-discipline and their grit. Okay? Sounds good, right? Big, big, let's talk big kind of flower and grit. Let me just make this personal. Can I make it personal? Okay? My father passed away in 2018, four years ago. A year later, we had a massive fire on the campus. A week later, my wife passed away. Three months later, COVID started. And for two and a half years, we've gone through COVID and now we're almost out. And I'm still here. And guess what? 350 faculty, staff, and volunteers are also here. And they've had family members, they've lost family members. <coughs> they've had disappointments, they've had failures, they've lost people, and they're still here. That's why I say I want you to know that 
when we talk about these values and things like grit, I want them to see it in us, and they're gonna see it in us, and I just need your help in that. Okay, they can come back to you and just say, hey, find someone on campus to help you with that, because we will. Last thing I want to show you is that we're going to go back 20 years. I don't want you to look at the faces, but I want you to be thinking about the values, and I want you to see your child's, excuse me, your young adult's face here as a young woman or a young man going out to do this, and this is a big, big problem that Mariner solved. That's your hand. Here we go. here at Cal Maritime, and I join my colleagues in uh, welcoming you here today. We're delighted to have this day arrive. It's one of the big days we, we look for every year, this one and commencement day. So um, I am here to, uh, well, first let me say a little bit about myself. I, um, I as provost and I invite VP of Academic Affairs, I oversee the entire academic program which includes three schools and a total, which uh, include a total of seven majors. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of information about some of those in a moment. Um, and um, I also oversee the Office of Admission and Academic Technology and a, a number of other areas. So um, we, we have a lot uh, to do with your son or daughter's education here. And you, um, you will uh, learn a little bit more about what the incoming class looks like in just a moment. I, I was brought to Cal Maritime, I was inspired to come to Mel, Cal Maritime two years ago, a little over two years ago. Um, I spent uh, my entire career in higher education, sort of a counterpoint to President Cropper, who spent 30 some years in the Navy. I spent 30 some, and then a word for, of that, uh, in um, higher ed. So I was a university professor for a couple of decades before moving into administration. And so I was brought to Cal Maritime because I really, really love the, the mission of, of this institution. And in particular, I'm uh, really inspired by the way in which we are both a university and um, a, a school that provides uh, professional uh, training and um, education for careers. I have long felt that this is um, a, the, the sweet spot, the both and, if you will, where you educate the entire student, but you also um, help that young person move into uh, a career. So we do that terrifically well here at Cal Maritime, as I think you all know. So um, with that said, I'd like to move on to sharing a little bit of information about the class that your student is joining. Uh, first of all, the, the number of new students we're talking about is 223. And uh, within that, we have uh, seven majors, as I mentioned, uh, in business, international business and logistics, 12.6% of the class. And then you see falling in under that, we have um, facilities, engineering, technology, global studies and maritime affairs, marine engineering, technology, the, the highest percentage, marine transportation, mechanical engineering, and oceanography, our newest major. We just this last spring, graduated our first uh, our first uh, graduates who had the oceanography degree. So we're proud of that. And, and these majors are growing, and um, we're, we're doing everything we can to support. So I thought you wanted to maybe see where your son or daughter fits into those percentages. Um, also a glimpse at the applicant types. We have some who are transfer students. About a third of our entering class are transfers, and about two thirds from high school. The age ranges, so I have to correct myself sometimes when I say, you know, 18-year-olds, uh, because our students are not all 18-year-olds, although we have uh, many that are. We have uh, a range of ages in our entering class here. You see that distribution indicated here. And then a little bit about the, um, the area of the geography, the gender uh, percentages, and ethnicity. So geography stacks up this way. We have 
have good representation from a variety of states, as you'll see here. The male-female ratio is um, is one we continue to work on because we are we are committed to finding a better balance between those. But um, we love all of our students, and the ethnicity um, breakdown is like this. In addition, we have, as you see here, a fair, you know, 13.5% of our students are incoming students, our first generation college good attendees, and 8.1% um, are in the Educational Opportunity Program. Uh, just maybe a little bit uh, more fun kind of background here, the, the high schools from which um, we see multiple students coming include Palos Verdes, Ketchikan, is banning, and then we have some other colleges that are frequent for sending and frequently sending as transfer students. And some come from military and maritime schools as well. We have some names that pop up repeatedly: Logan, Noah, Alex, Benjamin, Christopher, you see all those. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, we have a couple of uh, pairs of students who come to us from a single from the same household. So that every year we have a couple of those. So that's a little bit of background on that. Now I want to uh, say a little bit more about um, some of the advice I would give. I, my own uh, three daughters are all out of college now, so I've, I've been where you're sitting right now three times, and um, I you know, can't believe how quickly it goes for one thing. So um, I want you to, to sort of keep that in mind. But I want to give you a little bit of advice, maybe both as um, a parent of uh, College goers and as somebody who has um, long been in, in this kind of position, um, you're likely to um, you're going to want to talk with your son or daughter in the first weeks, right? And I think maybe Man is going to say a little bit more about kind of your communication plan with your student. Um, it's a fine line between um, giving advice to to your student on how they ought to manage their their time studying and so forth, and supporting them as they learn to make some of the choices one inevitably has to make as a student in, um, in college, right? And um, there are certain certain better ways of, of asking that kind of information. So I want to encourage you to, to ask open-ended questions of your students about their classes rather than saying, have you done your homework? <laughs> sort of going back to the helicopter parent. Um, so asking things like, you know, what was your what was your favorite class this week? You know, um, tell me, do you have a favorite professor so far? Um, are you, you know, who is, what what is uh, what is on the first week of the syllabus in one of your classes? Something that gets them talking, and you'll be able to gauge their excitement around certain topics. I'll also tell you, this um, this seems to be true every every uh, <laughs> every generation of students. When your son or daughter comes home to see you for the first time, let's, let's imagine it's around Thanksgiving, um, you will be amazed by how smart he or she is. <laughs> there will be opinions and facts that come out at that dinner table um, that, you know, you will be informed. So um, that's a great moment in my experience where you start to hear the bubble over of excitement from your son or daughter as they start to learn things in the classroom and carry them forward and start to really move those, those uh, the learning forward uh, for themselves. So some other advice I want, and I want to say also that the advice I'm going to be going through here um, will uh, also be shared with the students tomorrow morning. So I want you to see the advice that I'm going to be giving them. Some of this might seem like it's directed more closely toward them, and it is, but this way you can speak with the same um, sort of advice that we do. So Cal Maritime is a university, not a trade or vocational school, and we support and value students from all majors. I, I sort of um, uh, referenced this in my opening remarks about what really inspired me to come here. Um, we are, you know, we have our roots in a professional, uh, as a professional training school, but that's not, that's not who we are now. We do have professional licenses for some of the majors, but we are a university, and that means that um, your son or daughter is getting a full university education as well as getting training for careers. With that, um, 
We need to impress upon our new students that we are serious about academics. Cal Maritime um, is serious about um, all of its, its, its uh, classes, about all of its majors. There, uh, despite what, if anyone tries to tell you, oh, that's an easy major, or, or, or vice versa, compared, don't don't listen to it. There's rigor across the board, which um, which is part of this next point as well. College courses in general are demanding. One of the most frequent um, patterns you see from students, this pertains more to those who are coming right from high school and transferring, perhaps, um, it is that. Um, and I know this was true for my daughters as well. They, they didn't have to work particularly hard in high school. So they sort of assumed when they got to college that the same would be true. And it can be a real wake up call. And, and you can also, as a student, start to question yourself and, and wonder if you're meant to be here. That's sort of an imposter syndrome. Well, maybe you know how to do this actually. I was sort of like, well, maybe I wasn't cut out to be here because I was struggling with a math course, right? Um, Encourage them in those moments and let them know that there are resources. Um, they don't have to, to just assume that they can't make it through. So this next one um, goes hand in glove with that. The faculty are invested in the student's success. Our faculty come here because they want to work closely with students. When you come to a small institution like Cal Maritime, you know that's part of it. And so faculty choose to come here uh, rather than going to larger universities because they love that close interaction. That means the students should ask them for help, right? A big, big takeaway I want to give you is that your son or daughter should learn to advocate for him or herself. When you're struggling with a, with a subject, it can be hard for you to swallow your, your fear or your pride and go to a faculty member and say, I'm just not getting this. But that's, that's part of um, what it means to be accountable, as President Roberts said, accountable for yourself, right? So self-advocacy, asking for help is important when it, when it needs to happen. And we all need to learn how to do that in life, right? Um, additionally, there are um, resources outside the classroom. So we, are, uh, we have and we are continuing to build our academic support resources. We have university advisors who help weigh decisions that uh, students are making about um, what, what courses are, are good fits for them, but also we have tutoring services and other kinds of academic support. Be sure to seek those out. We want you to be sure your student seeks them out as needed. Um, and this is just tried and true advice, but if you want to give your son or daughter some pointed advice, it would be get to know at least one faculty member um, during the course of the first semester. I, I often mention that um, I had a student one time, this was at a different institution, who um, saw on the syllabus for classes that the faculty member had office hours. And um, for a whole semester, this, this student thought that meant do not disturb that faculty member during his or her office hours. It's just the reverse, right? So, so just things like that that, that um, we really want to make sure students understand. Um, so the, another thing is that there are going to be opportunities. With, with the rigor of the courses and the pace of the courses, it can be hard, uh, especially for first year students, to understand that there are all kinds of great opportunities they can take advantage of, whether it's, um, whether it's you know, engaging in some kind of undergraduate research or, or, or uh, an internship possibility. This will become more and more evident as they move through their four years but um, field trips or events on campus, to take advantage of those rather than just becoming, you know, engrossed only in the actual coursework. And classes start on the 29th. Um, we expect that, they, that um, I'm going to tell them this tomorrow morning, you show up ready to work. <laughs> it's part of what the president was emphasizing as well. So those are some of my points of advice, and I'd like to now turn it back over to VP McMahon, who is going to tell you a little bit more about her area. Thank you, Provost Schrader. I think you're hearing a theme here, uh, um, and tell me if I'm, I'm reflecting what you're hearing. There is challenge here, but there's support here. And I want to make sure that everybody hears both of those because um, we definitely challenge our students and we're a unique place. But what I'm going to talk to you about, and you've heard from the president and the provost, 
is the support also. So please keep those both in your mind. Um, this is the mission of the Division of Cadet Leadership and Development, and I, it's a very intentional mission, and I, I just want to emphasize a few points, which is that you know we're not student affairs, we're leadership and development about cadets. So we're, we're unique in that way. And every student here is part of the core of cadets. Every single one after this capping ceremony at five o'clock. And so we strive to be inclusive, meaning everybody belongs and developmental. We're an educational institution and that is our approach with all um, things that come upon us. And we're a holistic academy, so we're caring for the whole student <coughs> in every capacity and everything that's going on for them. Um, so please, you know, dismiss any ideas that it's only hierarchical leadership or people that, you know, seek positions. It's not like that here. We're about the whole student and developing them as they are. And then we offer program services and create an environment that inspires leadership with a global perspective. So we do expect our cadets to be inclusive and um, open to being developmental and global because we know that will help them be more successful when they leave here. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about what makes our campus life unique. So we are a small residential campus uh, and all of our cadets live on campus all four years. And the reason for that is that we have a demanding program. There is a high unit load, we have formation at 7 a.m. three times a week. We have watch standing responsibilities. And so we know for them to be successful, they should live right here. And so they can take naps if they need to, or just you know walk home instead of driving somewhere. Um, and we know it's a, a successful recipe, and that's what we've been doing for years. Um, along with the residential environment is a 24-7 support for our cadets. We have peer leaders you met today that are a support system and faculty and staff. And as I said, I live on campus, many of us do, and so we're here for whatever they need at any time. Um, there's a strong emphasis on well-being, and uh, the president you know, shared that we're one of the fittest colleges, and part of that is just our environment. Um, and it's also the attitude. So people are involved, our students are engaged, um, I think a third of our class are varsity ever involved in um, athletic sports. And then most everybody else is involved in a recreation and intramural. So they're playing games out on the Bodner Field all day, all night. And um, it's just kind of encouraged to get out there and be involved. Um, and that also um, includes social activities um, where they can feel a sense of belonging. Um, we do have a structured academy life. And um, that's part of developing leaders. So uh, we're, we're, we're excited that your son or daughter, um, your student is gonna be joining us and trying on this new structure. Now we, we know that it helps them be more productive. You might hear them groan, I have formation three times a week and I don't wanna get up at 6.30 or seven. But you know what, a little secret, I've heard students tell me that we should keep formation at seven because it helps them start their day and they're productive all day long. So, you know, even when we thought about changing things around, many of them will say, no, 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 this helps me be successful. And they develop habits that take them on for the rest of their life and in their next career. So that the structure um, really does lend to productivity and then developing themselves in the way that the president spoke about. Um, and within career services, uh, all of your students will learn about career services from the get-go, and hopefully you met them at the services fair this morning in PA. Um, so they work with every cadet on whether it's an internship, a co-op, or getting their seat time. So that when they graduate, they've got some experience under their belt and um, they are job ready day one. But that job readiness also comes from the structure and the academy and the leadership development. So it, it's a wraparound sort of um, program that really helps them become these global leaders. Um, and then lastly, you know, it's, it's, we really hope all of your students will be engaged and feel a sense of belonging. And so that's why we have a session after this specifically on this topic, so that um, you will all hear about how they can get engaged. 
And um, you know, I know as a parent that sometimes students will say, maybe my son or daughter, you know, there's nothing to do here. <laughs> you know, I'm bored. Well, there's a lot to do here. And it's about them seeking it out and making that connection. And sometimes you can help get them outside of their room and go make that connection. And just know that if they were to talk to anybody in the panel that's gonna be here at four, about wanting to get involved, they would give a very warm look and be brought right in. So just a few more things I want to touch on. I, I mentioned well-being. I want to show these fun pictures because um, when we think about structure, we also think about play, okay? So this is playing in the pool and playing room ball, which is an activity that our um, student government activities went in. So we often take the cadets to places at night and on the weekends so that they can get off campus and like blow off some steam. Um, I also want to mention, if you didn't encounter health services today, uh, you know, we have a, a really nice uh, team of um, professionals in health services and in our counseling and psych services. And it, it's a, you know, I've worked at a lot of different sized schools. It's a very friendly, intimate staff that cares deeply about your students. And so if they were ever to walk in there, in need of anything, I promise you they would have a warm welcome and they would be cared for. Along with all the staff within cadet leadership and development, whether they're you know, in career services or community engagement, but we're all going to look out for your students' well-being. So I, I touched on leadership development and I, I just want to emphasize that it begins today. And um, and also, it's not necessarily positional, okay? So, uh, every, most cadets will be involved in a first year seminar class, depending on their major. And then spring semester, we offer the Edwards Leadership Program, which all of your students are um, going to be put into, and we hope they will continue to take it. It's a seminar series um, that really explores them finding their own authorship of leadership. And um, that's just the springboard. And then there are activities inside and outside the classroom for the next three years. So for the whole four years, for them to develop themselves. And it's through experiential learning, it's for opportunities to you know, um, explore their sort of limits. And if they have failures, then we're here to support them. But the leadership development continues all four years. Okay, so parents, the, the President Crocker spoke about the snowplow parent. Um, I'm sure some of you chuckled, and we all know we have pieces of this inside of us, so it's totally human to really, you know, one thing I always remind folks is, if you're my age, you grew up wearing bike helmets, and it was like a new thing. It's like, wear your bike helmet, wear your safety belt. Well, we've been doing that our whole lives with our children, and now we're supposed to send them off and not do that for them? Well, it's, so it's hard, and so it's a development for you and for your student. But these are just two resources. So this one, How to Raise an Adult, um, Break Free of Over-Parenting Trap and Prepare Your Kid for Success. So this author, Julie Lithcock Kames, um, was the Dean of Freshmen at Stanford. All true stories about how to let your student develop themselves and have self-advocacy. Uh, and this other one, The Gift of Failure, is also a good read in case you're interested how the best parents learn to let go um, and let their children succeed, so their ch children can succeed. Um, if you need to talk to any of our team about this, <laughs> you know, like let's say there's a stumble and um, you're not sure how to respond, you can call us and we can coach you and then you can, you know, um, interact however you want to with your son or daughter. But our goal is that you'll have them seek us out and we're up here on the sidelines to also talk to you about what we offer. And our website has some of those resources as well. Um, so the, before I show you that, um, I do want to mention a couple tips. You've heard a lot today of tips, but one is to establish a communication plan. So when are you going to connect? Is it going to be once a week? Is it going to be Sunday afternoons, Tuesday nights? Um, but I would, I would figure out at least a, a solid time where you know you're going to check in. Because they're going to be very busy, and they're not going to have a lot of time to call you. And so please let them do that. Let them get engaged and, and separate. 
Um, but then you'll have your set times. And um, before that, I would highly encourage you to set your expectations. You know, be clear about what you expect around academics. You're all investing a great deal in resources, uh, in this experience, and every class matters. So set your expectations. Also around um, behavior and alcohol use, and that you expect them to be respectful and uh, inclusive. So these are all things that you actually have an influence over. Parents don't always know that. They think the peer culture uh, is the only influence, but uh, parents have a huge influence on things like behavior and um, if a student chooses to drink or not, um, and we have no alcohol permitted on campus. So those are just a couple tips, and then I want to lastly wrap up with um, saying in your folders, you have information on Keel Holder family, and so I highly encourage you all, if you have Facebook, to join that, because it's a great way of getting information. So when we send a university-wide letter, it also gets posted there. And so we encourage you know, your son or daughter to tell your parents about important things, but here's another way for you to get real-time information. Um, we'll also tell you about Family Weekend, which is October um, 7th and 8th, and it's the perfect time for you to come back and visit with your son or daughter. Okay, it's, it's strategically time for you not to come to campus until then, <laughs> and to come then, and to really spend some solid time with them after they've um, had some autonomy and found their way um, and then, you know, experienced some things on their own. Um, we, we developed a really fun weekend, so we really hope to see you then. Um, all that information is in your packet. And I do want to um, give a shout out. I think it's the Lopes family. You know the Linos family, are they here? Linos. There they are. So they're up here with their other son, and now they're with son number two here today with you all. So uh, if you want to know, All right, so now we're going to open it up for questions. Um, if we could bring up the lights a little bit. We're going to bring up the lights, and then um, we'll just take a few minutes of questions, and we'll also all be available later um, after this session. So, and, and the questions can be for anyone. 